Well, good morning and welcome to our 930 Contemporary Worship Service here at St. Pete First. My name is Travis James, the associate pastor here at the church, and we are glad that you have tuned in for what is going to be a great morning of worship this morning. Uh, believing that you're not here by tradition or you're not just here because you are uh, looking online and seeing how to fill your time, but you are here because you're responding uh, to, to something within you, a longing within your heart uh, that was placed there by God, a longing and a desire to encounter God and to do so, yes, virtually, but in community with one another. So again, we are glad that you are with us this morning and we'll add that if you are uh, visiting, even though it is online, if you are new with us, we would love to connect with you and help you find ways that you can plug into this great church uh, and, and get involved with the wonderful ministry opportunities that we are about upon our return to in-person meetings and gatherings here at the church. A couple of quick announcements before we begin worship this morning. Uh, really, the, the main announcement being to continue going to our website, continue visiting our Facebook pages uh, to get information, video content, and any updates uh, that we want for you to have in this time. Th those are the best platforms for you to keep visiting and want to ensure you that we will give you updates and information on those platforms in the days and weeks ahead. I know the kids' church video has already been uploaded to YouTube. It's on the Facebook page and the website. So check that out. Uh, look at it with your kids and also send it to a family member or a friend who would benefit from those great videos that are being produced by our children's ministry. And also with children's ministry in mind, I want you to save the date for June 22nd. That is going to be the start date of our virtual, our online VBS, Vacation Bible School for Kids. And so want you to know that we have resources that have been uh, made for you to have at your home. And so if you are interested in receiving those resources, you can find information on the children's page of our website or by contacting Laura Ulrich, who is our Director of Children's Ministries. We would love for you to have those resources as we uh, virtually join together for VBS this year, which is always a great time of year and wonderful celebration with the children in our community and our congregation. Uh, there's other announcements, other information that you can find online. I personally want to encourage each of us to read this week's Nelson's Notes. Pastor Craig Nelson puts out what I think of as a blog, uh, a weekly writing that's often found in our bulletins uh, that are printed out, but it's on our electronic bulletin and various platforms. But this week's was particularly uh, challenging in a good way addressing some of the, the hot button issues and realities that we are facing in this world, in our country, and in our lives. And it speaks to the inequality and the racial injustice that has taken place. And I personally want to encourage you uh, to read that, uh, to wrestle with that, to be challenged by it. May, may we continue to, to feel this kind of holy disruption that I believe so many of us are feeling. May we continue to uh, feel this righteous anger this anger that's within us, that something is wrong, something is messed up and not made right and not whole right now because that is what makes us human, but that's what makes us Christian is we long for a day when we can experience the restoration and the reconciliation that, that God has offered to us in Christ, but that we can experience it, be a part of it and offer it to others uh, as we are called to do in Christ. And so I will leave you with that encouragement to read that, to wrestle with that, and let us continue the conversation. But at this time, I want to open us with a word of prayer on this Pentecost Sunday as we enter into God's presence and we worship his holy name. So let us pray. Gracious God, while our world is broken, and while our lives and the lives of those around us are often filled with fear, heartache and pain, we are reminded that you are good. We are reminded that you are faithful and we are reminded that new every morning is your love and your grace and it is offered to us fresh each day. And so for the gift of this day, the gift of this new day and all that it contains, whatever it contains, Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving. God, we come before you this morning to worship you as Lord. We have joined together online to praise your holy name and we have gathered because we want to encounter your holy presence in our world and in our lives. And so God, on this Pentecost Sunday, as we celebrate the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, 
upon your world and your people. Remind us that it wasn't just a one-time event that took place years ago with the disciples who walked with Jesus, but it is an ongoing offering that you pour into our world and our lives as we come to put our faith and our trust in your son, Jesus Christ. And so God, we ask that you would pour out that Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit upon us, washing over us in new ways this morning, opening our hearts and our minds to the message that you would have for us, challenging us in the ways that are needed. God, in all that is said and done in this hour, in the music and the proclamation, may we be drawn closer into your presence and in doing so transformed by your mercy, your grace, and your love and empowered in such a way that allows us to live the lives that you have invited us to live through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Worship with us this morning. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. 
turn on the news or social media, um, it's not hard to find articles or things where the world is telling us that because we're not meeting in a church building, that the church is dead, that the church is not alive. But I'm here to tell you this morning, the church is not dead, it is alive. And as we sing this morning, it doesn't matter if you are in a church building, it doesn't mean if you're, it matter if you're at the beach or if you're on a mountaintop or in your home living room. The Spirit of the Lord is with each and every one of us. The Bible promises us that the Spirit of the Lord hovers over each of us, whether we believe or don't believe, but it comes into our hearts when we accept the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I, I just pray this morning that you just, if you, if you are not a believer, that if you have not asked the Lord to come into your heart, that as we sing, that you sing this to him, that you ask the Lord to have these words just seep, seep deep into your soul, into your heart. And I, I just pray that you would experience the presence of the Lord wherever you are. The church is not dead. Jesus is alive and his spirit is flowing free and within each and every one of us.
Lord, the writer of wisdom said it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It is because your spirit is here that we are not consumed, that we are not taken in by the realities that are around us, by the circumstances that predominate the news. Lord, I ask that your mercies be new every morning, that we experience the miracle that Tiffany is just singing about. And Lord, may that be true in our lives personally, may it be true in the life of this church, and Lord, please bring your spirit upon our communities. And we ask for peace, but we ask for justice, and we ask for reconciliation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Craig Nelson. I am one of the pastors here, and I'm wearing a mask, not because I don't want to breathe on you through the TV screen. Um, I recognize that's not an option uh, or a possibility. But we're going to do something that we haven't done before here. Um, we're going to have two people on stage. Um, Travis and I have been very careful over the last 10 weeks to um, be very socially distanced. We haven't even used the same pulpit um, now that we're learning that more airborne stuff, we're relaxing some of that. But um, I'm going to ask someone to come up here and share the screen with me here. And because of that, I am wearing the mask, and he is too. I'm going to speak more about masks here in a minute. I have some um, sad news to share, and um, here to um, bear bad tidings with me is Lou Astudo. Lou, would you come? Lou, Lou has been asking me, and Lou, if you would just kind of stand over there um, and will be a little distance, but you need that microphone. Um, can we move this? Well, I guess I, yeah, okay. Um, Lou has been telling me for a while that um, he desired to retire again. And I just kind of reacted with, nah, I don't hear you. And then I, um, I don't know, did all kinds of things to try to put him off. And um, this time the grandchildren have won and um, Lou and Anne-Marie are going to um, in fact retire. They're not leaving the church, but they are going to be gone a lot um, seeking to, to be with their family up north. And um, Lou, we, we're going to truly miss you. We are going to miss you as, um, the, the visitation pastor here who has extended our love to so many. You have just been um, an ambassador of the church, but an ambassador of Christ in the life of many. And um, we're going to miss that pastoral presence, that, that, you, that, that pastoral care that you have brought. I personally am going to miss going to lunch and, and, and having theological discussions, just me benefiting from your insight and um, who God is in, in, in your life. Um, we're going to miss the humble spirit that you bring of service and leadership. Um, and um, I don't know, um, I, I, I guess it has to be. But I just wanted you to know that we love you, that we um, do wish you well and um, to prove that, I, I have a card here. Now, I, I, normally you don't say what's in the card, but um, I will let him know and tell you that there are gas cards in there. Lou, there's enough gas for you to go away, and there's enough gas cards for you to come back. And so um, I just know that we love you dearly. Would you step up to the microphone? Lou, just tell me, um, where were you born and raised? 
Before I do, I'd just like to say, you did try and get me to stay with a lot of things. I was holding out for the yellow vet. It wow. It never came. Wow. There was a price. There was a price. Huh. No, actually, I'm from Brooklyn, <laughs> New York, and... Um, Tell, 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 tell us, you, I don't think you, you grew up certainly as a committed Christian. When did Christ come into your life? I became a believer when I was 25, uh, frankly, because I had nowhere else to go. Huh. Uh, but that was a life-changing experience for me. And you became part of the, the, the faith community, but you didn't, when did you engage in, in full-time Christian ministry? When, when did that come along? That was about 15 years later. Wow. Up until that time, I served as a deacon for many years, uh, but I was encouraged by many in the church and friends, uh, people who uh, knew me well and I was kind of accountable to, uh, to, uh, to become licensed and begin the journey of pastoral ministry. And that took you where? Uh, originally, it took us to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Previous to that, Amory and I worked for 10 years in parachurch ministry. And then uh, we began ministering. Uh, we were invited to join the staff of our church in inner city Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Wow. And out of that, you there you retired and came here. We spent uh, some time, uh, we spent another 10 years in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, uh, working among the Amish and the Mennonites. So one was uh, heavy duty inner city, the other was heavy duty rural. Yeah, yeah, I've been. Wonderful been congregations in both places. <laughs> and you've been here for five years, um, maybe a little over five years, I guess. Um, we, we truly appreciate your ministry here, and um, we are going to miss you. And, um, but know that we, we're delighted that you're taking this next step and that you're going to enjoy family and traveling and all of that. And we look forward to you coming back and, and sharing stories. Um, we're glad that you are not leaving the church, but that you are just transitioning into to loving on grandchildren and um, and your family. So God bless you, Lou, and thank you for um, being part of, of us. And thank you to the congregation. You guys have been bread and wine to us. Uh, Craig, on a personal note, thank you, my brother. You've been a wonderful boss and pastor and a good friend. Love you too, Lou. Amen. And I'd give you a hug under normal circumstances. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, while Lou is headed back to, to his seat, um, I'll just go ahead and, and, and um, speak to our tithes and offerings. Y'all, um, we have experienced in the month of April a generosity that exceeded what we had last year in April that has somewhat made up the difference. There was a decline, a serious decline in March. Um, you have been very generous and um, our church has continued uninterrupted. Um, we are um, having the preschool come back starting tomorrow. We have been paying teachers all of the way through even though we've been closed. Um, it, is, it is your generosity that is continuing our church and ministry, and I, I guess I don't even have to hold this anymore since Lou's not up here. Um, we, we, I, I, I'm just, I can't um, say how humbled I am and how amazed I am at God's provision, but um, because of, of your commitment and your generosity um, to the Lord. And so I invite you, um, as Travis has done every Sunday, to take a moment and to um, write a check, go online, um, give in any way that you see fit. Um, and as we do that, we are going to um, hear from the praise team one more time.
Lord, we do want to be overcome by your presence. We want to know that you are with us. And I ask that that would be real in every home, that it would be real in every chair, that it be real in every house of worship where worship is going on in whatever way it is today around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, here we are. Um, it's the 31st of May. <laughs> and, and all kinds of things of happening around the country. I'll speak to that in, in a minute. But I think a question that is on the minds of a lot of people is when and if are we going to um, open up um, the church? And our bishop's office has um, said that we will be able to do that um, after the 15th of June, so that the first Sunday that we might come together is um, June um, 21st. And as a church staff and as a committee called the Shield of Faith, which is a group of us that is gathered together to, to figure these things out, we're aiming towards the 21st. We're not ready to announce that that's when we are going to um, to start worship, but, but we are gearing up so that we are ready for that. That's going to mean several things. That's going to mean that we're not going to have hymnals, for instance, in the pews, not that we use hymnals anyway, um, but we're going to clean up and sanitize everything here. We are going to space everyone out every other pew, only allowing people on the ends of each pew. That's just... Um, the way it's going to be. Um, I think that'll be um, protecting each one of us. We are going to wear masks um, in the church. I, I'm very disappointed that that's becoming a political thing, um, whether you wear one or not. I don't see it that way. I see it as an expression of the great command, um, which is to love God, but to love neighbor. And um, we, we protect our neighbors as we wear masks. And that is just something that we are going to do. As I um, wore a mask today, Travis and I have um, had distance enough um, from one another here that we, we have not um, felt the need to, to use it. But then with Lou, it, it was necessary. But also, I just kept it on and I sang with it. and. Um, there's a difference with the sound, there's a difference with your projection when you're wearing a mask. For one thing, when you breathe in, you can kind of feel it um, coming in, but what comes out is different. There's a difference between a choir member obeying what Derek says, which is to fill your stomach and then to project out as you sing. There's a difference between that and, and, and thinking of a choir member who's sitting right in, or standing right in front of you and you're breathing all your bad breath on that poor soul. But anyway, um, there's a difference between that and the way we are going to be spaced out and the way that we sing. And um, I, I, I'm leaning, we haven't made this decision finally, but I'm leaning towards allowing for singing, but recognizing that, we, that there's a person in front of us that we are being mindful of. The mask helps that tremendously. Um, what else? Um, the distancing. Um, oh, entry in the into the um, into the church. We're going to do um, according to the way the architects intended us to do that, which is to come in from the street, come up into the narthex, and then be seated. Um, we we are looking to see if the city will allow us just to put bags over the uh, meters that are out there in front. Otherwise, we're gonna put quarters in them, whatever, so that we can just have that as a drop-off point. There's an elevator on that south side of the church. There's also one in the way most of us normally come into the church by the fellowship hall. That will be available if you are coming in a wheelchair or you're coming with a walker. We want everyone to, to access this place easily. I don't think this decision hasn't been made final, but I don't think we'll use reservations. I think that you are going to self-select that many of us will not feel comfortable coming, and that is just fine. I, just because eventually the church opens up does not mean that you have to be here. Um, so there will be a variety of people who won't come, and that's just fine, and we look forward to many coming by Facebook. Um, but um, anyway, we're, we're going to come in. We can't come through that one door in the north or in the, in the uh, by the fellowship hall and up the stairs. 
That's just a COVID petri dish waiting to happen there. And so we are going to have most of us coming through the, the narthex. We're looking forward to that, to that day, whenever that might be. And we'll, we'll make an announcement about that next Sunday. Um, Travis has spoken to the issue of race um, and the issues that are going on in our city and cities around the country, realities that have been here for a very long time but certainly have peaked in the last month. And um, our prayer is, continues to be that the Holy Spirit comes upon us and um, just anoints our country with a blessing and a peace um, that, that, does, that, that speaks to and is accomplished because of justice, um, not in spite of it. And um, we, we are going to be in prayer about that as we move forward. Today is um, a day that we normally celebrate Pentecost and I, I want to do that this morning. I, I want to... Um, to, as we have every year and as we have done for centuries, celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, the traditional text for, um, <clears throat> for Pentecost Sunday is Acts chapter 2, and in verse 1 it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And I read that and I said, that is just not the case. Um, we are not in one place, and we are not in one place geographically or in time. You, the, the, the signal that you get of Facebook, um, even if you were signed up early, is about 15 seconds delayed. If you came into it a little late, you're that farther you know, delayed. You can watch this an hour later. You can watch this a day later. There's no, no, we're not together in space nor in time. Our country is not together in race or in politics. Our denomination is not together in theology. And I just read that and I said, you know, I think there's something else that we need to read. And so I want to share with you Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 5. Um, this is still um, having to do with the Holy Spirit, but let me um, read this to you. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. The mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law, nor can it. Those controlled by the flesh cannot please God. You however, are controlled not by the flesh, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. There's a difference between being filled with a spirit and being filled with spirits. Or there's a difference between, you know, the, the, the Greek says that the same word spirit, neoma, is the word for air, um, neoma as well. And there's a difference between being filled with a spirit and just being filled with hot air. I want to illustrate this by telling you a story that I just, um, just couldn't believe years ago. This happened in 1983. Um, a guy by the name of Lawrence Richard Walters, um, who was born in 1949, died in 1993, was sitting in his backyard in his lawn chair just drinking and had this great idea that he wanted to fly. And so he... Um, went to the uh, military surplus store and bought a whole bunch of weather balloons, 48 of them as a matter of fact, and um, brought those home. Then he got a fake purchase order and or, uh, bought a or rented a whole bunch of canisters of helium to fill those things. 
and he proceeded to attach all of the weather balloons to his lawn chair, where he had had this great idea, and then he attached that lawn chair to his Jeep, and then he started filling the balloons with air, with um, not hot air, but helium, and um, he, his intention was to, to fly. His intention was to go up about 100 feet. And then he, he had the great idea that he would take a gun with him and just start shooting these things and then fall down. So he's filled up all these things with, with helium. He is now um, in between his Jeep and the, the air. He's attached by this rope and his friends detach him, his gun, his CB radio, and more beer, um, and watch him go up. And he went up, and he went up 100 feet, and he went up 1,000 feet, and he went up 11,000 feet, and kept climbing, but at that point, commercial airliners were seeing him, wondering what was going on, called the FAA. The FAA patches through his CB radio and says, what are you doing? And he tells them, and they said, how do you plan to get down? And he said, well, I brought a gun with me to shoot these, these um these balloons, and they, thought, they said, well, that's a good idea. We think that you should do that because you are now in the landing pattern of the Santa Monica Airport. And so he shoots a couple of balloons, but in his fear of being so far up in the air, and I, his beer is gone, I don't know, he dropped his gun. And so now he's not able to shoot anymore. He had shot enough to where he started to descend, but it took 45 minutes for him to descend, which gave the police plenty of time to just follow him and be ready when the crews got him off of the electric lines that he got tangled in to arrest him. There is a difference between being filled with the Spirit and being filled with spirits or with hot air. And I want to explore that filled with the Spirit. And I want to think about what that means. What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit and to have the Spirit of God living in us? Dallas Willard, um, great um, theologian and, and philosopher, defined the Spirit as unbodily, personal power. Now that's not the way I would have thought to define spirit, but it does make sense. Unbodily, personal power. God, the scriptures tell us that God is spirit, and God does not have a body, but God is personal, and God has power. It's called his will. My will is power as well. If I'm going to do something, if I'm going to accomplish something, it is my will that is put in there. And so spirit is unbodily personal power, I think, with God and with ourselves. Now, if I am left to my own devices, if I am left to just the human experience, I am going to die my body is going to die, my mind is going to die, and my spirit will die. That is just the nature of who we are as, as humans. But Paul says that there is something else now that has been introduced to our lives. And if we incorporate the spirit of God, we will live eternally. And I want to read to you Romans 8 verse 11 which says, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. I want to live a life that is filled with that spirit. But how does that happen? How is it that God lives in me? I think that there is a space in me in this body that is ready for God and God can fill. And it, it, I, I'm helped by the illustration that Paul, the Apostle Paul offers to us of our bodies being the temple or a temple of God. This comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, where it says, do you not know 
that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys the temple of God, God will destroy that person for the temple of God is holy and that is what you are. I want you to think about the temple in Jerusalem. Some of you have been there. Some of you have been there with me. Um, Many of you have studied it. You, you, You have an idea of what the temple is. The temple in Jerusalem was a mammoth building. There were synagogues around Israel, but there was one temple. And so when Paul talks about a temple, it, everyone had that image of the temple. And when you go today and you go to the Wailing Wall, that is just a retaining wall of the base that, that was built so that they could build a temple on top of it. The best feature the most holy place, the, the, the most special and beautiful and just unique place in that whole structure was what was called the Holy of Holies. That is where God lived. That is where God was. That was the space in which God lived. I think that you and I have a space like that in which God lives. And I guess the question is, how big is that space? I have a space for Janice, my wife. And um, I think that that space has been growing. We've been living together 24-7 for the last 10 weeks. And and I love her. And that space has gotten bigger because we have been living closer together. But just because that's true doesn't mean that, 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 that... that the space that, that loves my children has decreased or the space for my friends has decreased? My love for you has decreased? No. And so it is with God. The laws of physics do not apply to the size of the heart when God begins to fill it. God will fill our hearts, will, will be in us, but that doesn't crowd anybody else out. It just makes it better. Life filled with the Spirit is one in which we know that we are not condemned to the realities that we see today. We are able to embrace the things that God might bring to us in the future. And that, my friends, is a good thing. Verse 10 says, but if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And that righteousness is a gift from God that is given to each one of you. And there's a direct benefit of all of this. Verse 6 says the following, the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. We are living in days in which we need God's peace. We are not seeing it on the streets even of St. Pete, certainly of Tampa, and elsewhere in our country. But the life of the Spirit allows that to be different. It allows me to react in a different way. It allows me to be bigger and better in the love that I have for everyone, regardless of race, regardless of socioeconomic status. There is a freedom that is offered to us in this peace that comes in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We have hope because there is a resource with a capital R. There is a resource that has been given to us by Christ that is in us that can be transformative not just of us but of the community. And today, this Pentecost Sunday, I pray that God's Spirit would just blow across this land and transform us all. Friends, it starts with you and me. It starts with a personal experience with Christ because you and I begin the relationships with other people that model the way things can be, not the way things are. And I want to invite you to that life. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that 
you invite us into a life of the Spirit. That we can leave the, light of the, the life of the flesh, which is death, says Paul. And that we can see peace and hope. And we can embrace a better tomorrow. Again, I ask that you would just move amongst your people. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close this morning with a song called Breathe. We selected this song before we were aware of what not being able to breathe was going to mean as a community here in the last week. I want us to, to sing this song anyway. It speaks to God coming and filling us and allowing us to breathe. That is my prayer for every community in every town in this country. Let's sing together.
Please receive this benediction. May God the Father, who gave to us his Son and his Spirit, may God the Son who came to share the peace, he's the Prince of Peace, and the hope of all history. And may God the Holy Spirit, who allows us to experience God on the inside and the outside, go with you now, forevermore, till we meet again here.